Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, another new video. In this video, we're continuing the introduction to generative AI and the RAG uh, playlist that we started. And in the previous videos, we learned about the introduction to Gen AI, introduction to RAG, the importance of data. And uh, in this video, I'm very excited because we're gonna talk about semantic search and vectors and uh, a little bit more about databases and also single store, which is the platform that we're utilizing in this course. So if you want to check out the resources, uh, you know, make sure you check out it in the links in the description below. You get some more free credits as well if you sign in using the link that I've provided in the description so that you can, you know, play around with the single store platform and uh, use production ready databases and other offerings that they provide. So yeah, let's get started and learn about vectors and semantic search. So when we talk about uh, vectors and semantic search, you know, these are the technologies that are you know, not just reshaping industries, but also making our interactions with data more intuitive and efficient. So first of all, let's talk about semantic search, right? Technically speaking, semantic search basically refers to search algorithms that interpret the intent and contextual meaning of a word a user employs. So instead of relying solely on the keyword, for example, it analyzes the query to fetch results that are contextually relevant to the intended meaning. Now, what does that mean? So imagine you're in a library that is filled with books, right? But instead of looking for titles, you're searching for, you know, based on ideas or some of the themes that you remember. Now, that's essentially what semantic search does with data. It goes beyond keywords to understand the context and meaning behind your queries, making your search experience much more intelligent. Now, the backbone of semantic search is something that we call vectors. You may have heard of vectors. And in the realm of data science, vectors are basically, you can think of it as, in our data structures bootcamp, we learned about arrays, right? So vectors are like arrays of numbers that represent data in a higher dimensional space. Now, what do I mean by that? So each dimension basically corresponds to a feature that is relevant to that data. And these vectors help in finding similarities and differences between different pieces of data based on the distance and direction in this multi-dimensional space. Now, for example, I will take a very simple example. Let's say you are buying a house and uh, you want to create a machine learning program or model or whatever AI application that will help you in giving an estimated price of the house. Now, obviously when you're buying a house, a lot of things depend on the price, the location, the floor of the house, the square feet, how big the house is, how many bedrooms, and all these other things, right? So for simplicity purpose, let's say we only have three features of the house. Okay, only three features. So we are only taking the square feet, the floor at which the house is, and another one being the whether the house has a balcony or not. So three features. Now these three features, every single one of these feature can be represented as a dimension. So this vector graph will be a 3D dimension. So if I have an X, Y, Z axis, for each feature you can have like a point. Okay. And then you can have another dimension that will show you the price and other things. Right. So that's basically essentially what I'm talking about here. And uh, when we talk about like uh, LLMs and other higher dimensional models, there are like too many dimensions that you can't even imagine. So don't even try it. <laughs> All right. So that's basically, you know, what uh, vectors are. And this is very crucial when we talk about semantic search because it allows the system to understand and match based on conceptual similarities rather than just keyword matches. So you can think of vectors as a coordinates on a map, but instead of, let's say, leading you to a city or something, they guide you to pieces of information based on their meaning, right? And each vector represents a unique piece of data in a multi-dimensional space. This may sound a bit sci-fi, but it's similarly, you know, how we naturally categorize concepts in our minds. It's just, it's very hard to imagine dimensions that are like you know more than three dimensions very hard to imagine all right 
All right, so we learned about uh, vectors, we learned about uh, semantic search, but now the question arises that let's say we have too many dimensions and I'm just like, uh, I have these many features, please give me an answer. This is what the person look like, tell me what person it is. Uh, this is what the animal image looks like, all these features are here, tell me what animal this is. Um, these are the, all the features of the houses, tell me the estimated price. So it has to make that calculation you know, you have the vectors that you have, you know, like a given, given it to the AI model and it has to find what is the nearest possible outcome. Is it a cat? Is it a dog? So how do you make that? Basically, it's searching, right, in simple terms. So how do you make that search very efficient when the dimensions are too big? So now we're going to talk about vector indexes. So these are very specialized databases or indexed structures that are designed to optimize the storage, retrieval, and search of vectors in a higher dimensional space. So when you're structuring data in a way that, you know, focuses on efficiency and accuracy, vector indexes significantly reduce the time that it takes to find the nearest neighbor that we just mentioned, uh, or like the most relevant vector in response to the query that you have made. These are pretty much essential for enabling fast and scalable semantic searches across large data sets. So when we took our library example in the, you know, in the, at the beginning of this video, think of it like if each book had a unique coordinate that indicated its contents theme, right? So a vector index would be your incredibly eff efficient, like um, you can think about is um, because it's searching for that book. So a librarian, maybe that's the right analogy. Yeah. So the librarian who can find this book in seconds no matter how big the library is. And that's actually what, what happens, you know, you go to a library, you can't find a book, you just ask them, they know where it is. So that's vector versus vector indexes in terms of book versus a librarian who can find it very quickly, right? So vector indexes use algorithms to optimize the search process and they ensure that the results are not only accurate, but also instant and very, very fast. All right, now the next thing I want to talk about is the another type of database, which is known as a contextual database. What is that? Um, let me take a, somewhere you may have seen it in the real world. Let's say you make a Google search or search somewhere in a, some, some place and you search for climate change. Okay, you make that search, but it, it shows you your queries and your results related to climate change, but it understands what you're trying to search, what is the context behind your search. So in addition to it, it's also showing you searches related to global warming, environmental policies. So it's recognizing the context link between these topics. You're searching for dosa, it's showing you idli and sambar vada as well. You're searching for pizza, it's showing you pasta and other things as well. The climate change example was better, but uh, <laughs> uh, a contextual database, basically it's the type of database that is designed to understand and leverage the context within the data uh, on which the data items are being used. So it, it not only stores the data, but also the interrelations and the semantics underlying its structure. As I mentioned with our example, this allows for queries that can consider the broader context of terms and concepts, providing more uh, nuanced and relevant results, right? So that's another type of database that I wanted you to know about. All right, so that's all good. And we learned about a lot of new concepts, how data is uh, stored, uh, about uh, you know semantics, vectors, all these other things. Um, but the question I got in the previous video as well of this uh, playlist is, uh, now we're talking about data quite a lot. Obviously it's crucial when working with such you know applications, but how do you know what to look for uh, basically in a database? How do you pick the right, right? So when choosing a database, especially one that is capable of handling complex semantic queries, you should consider several factors, right? And the number one factor I would I would say that performance is key. So you have to ensure that your data can have the database can handle your query load and return responses quickly. Another thing would be scalability, which is also crucial for managing the growing data without degradation in performance, and also compatibility with the different data types and formats that ensures flexibility in handling diverse data needs. And the fourth one being because we're talking about data, advanced security features to protect against data breaches and also ensure compliance with regulations. 
All right, so we learned about vectors, we learned about semantic search, bunch of databases, what to look for in a database. And I wanna spend this time to talk a little bit more about single store, what their story is and where they are headed. So it's a powerful data, uh, database uh, technology that has uh, been making waves in the world of real-time analytics. Fun fact, it was previously known as MemSQL or MemSQL, however we like to call it. And it was founded in 2011 by Nikita and Adam, who cross path at uh, Facebook and uh, with a you know, very rich background from uh, like Microsoft uh, SQL Server, Nikita had a clear vision to create a database that could keep up with the immense scale and speed of data today. As in the previous section, I spoke about, you know, what, what are some of the top four things you have to look for when picking a database. And so that's how the journey began. And um, they, they just you know, wanted to build a database that was built for the demands of the modern age. Now, originally, uh, when we talk about the technological evolution, it's called MemSQL, as I mentioned already. Uh, so the database initially started as an in-memory row store, and this was ideal for high-speed data transactions. And as the need grew, so, this, uh, so did MemSQL, evolving to include a column store for analytics as well. Now, this dual nature allowed it to handle both the transactions and analytics simultaneously. And this provided a hybrid approach that was both innovative and necessary for handling vast amounts of data efficiently. And then in 2022, MemSQL, they had grown, they had grown like uh, far beyond their initial offerings that they made. So they promoted uh, like a significant um, brand, uh, you can call it like rebrand to single store. Now the new name, single store, that basically reflects its capabilities to manage multiple data types and workloads in a single unified database, whether it's like on-premise, in the cloud, or let's say a combination of both. And today, single store stands out for its uh, real-time data ingestion, exceptional query performance, seamless scalability, it supports SQL, and uh, it also integrates easily with other big data ecosystems. And industries, you know, ranging from like finance to telecommunications rely on single store for everything from real-time dashboards to complex data operations, proving its versatility and power. And you can check out you know, some of the folks who use it on their website as well, and all the links can be found in the description below. And as we look forward in the future, and uh, you can see it you know, from their uh, content pieces and like the webinars and announcements that they do as well, so their community is highly active, Single Store continues to innovate, and uh, especially around the cloud services, because they are enhancing flexibility and performance. And with the ongoing expansion in like partnerships and technology uh, you know, uh, integrations, I uh, believe that single store is poised to remain a key player in the tech world, helping businesses um, make the most of their data in real time. All right, so that was about it. And uh, in this lecture, we covered some of the foundational and advanced concepts that are, I would say, pivotal you know, in the realm of data management and search technologies. We will talk about semantic search, vectors, and vector databases. Now, these are not just theoretical concepts, but these are vital in extracting value from the immense land of, like, you know, data landscapes that we navigate daily. And uh, I would just say that uh, in the next uh, videos, we'll see how these work, you know, hands-on. And uh, if you have any qu questions, uh, let me know in the comment section below. And um, yeah, I'm happy to answer those and check out the links in the description below as well to sign up to Single Store, get the free credits. And um, I will see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.